Booyah! Tippy time, my dameys, and welcome to episode 13. Tizzle. A review lay interrupted with me, your host, Booty Tang. Haha. <laughs> I'm actually going to call this Unlucky 13. Wah, wah, wah. Unlucky for you because I'm probably going to talk a lot on this one. If you can. If you can bear with me. Because I'm going to be. I'm going to be doing one and doing this one about my favorite movie of all time. It's my favorite and I like it. I like it a lot. I don't care. I can like it if I want it. I don't have to be like you. I don't have to. I, I'm a snowflake. A, a unique snowflake in a blizzard of other snowflakes. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know why they taught us that shit. That was stupid. Anyway, Cannibal Holocaust. Me thinking, <clears throat> well, dude, Pootie, motherfucker, you say it's your favorite movie of all time. Why would you not lead off your little movie review dealio with your favorite movie of all time? Why would you not start with that? And I was like, you know what? Because I wanted to wait for a very special number episode. The soonest one. I mean, the next one would be like, what, 69? That's a lot of episodes down the road. That's a, that's like, that's a lot. And I was like, 13. And why 13 also goes along with this is because it's like everybody in this motherfucker is unlucky. The dudes filming the shit, unlucky. Because, you know, they get fucking murdered by cannibals because they're kind of uh, jackasses. Unlucky for <clears throat> one dude actually being able to find the footage and finding out how fucked up shit was. But like, I got this three disc deluxe edition grindhouse. This is so fucking great. I had like a, I have, I, I still have the DVD, the special edition that they came out with. The, I think it's, yeah, it's like two discs and everything. And I was just like, oh, this is so great. Fucking love it, you know? And um, I still got that, I'm holding on to that. My woman picked me up like it's a, uh, I think it's f French. It's a French import of it. And it's like, I, I will, as the years go by, collect more different like copies of it. Cause it's like, you know, some people have that movie where it's like, they want to get all the different ones and just be like, dude, this is my collection of this movie, you know, on this format from this country and everything. Just cause it's like the one movie that they're just, they fucking love, you know? And this is that one for me and I'm going to do that. Comes with a little soundtrack. Dude, I have seriously, seriously, I love the fucking music through this. I have driven around for like, you know, weeks on end just with that and my stereo in the car, just fucking listening to it just over and over again. I fucking love it. Just jamming out to it, blasting it. Yes. I love this, the grind out. <gasps> what you doing, you fool, you son of bitch? That was loose. I don't like that. Okay, there we go. And, uh, ooh, the little booklet. Oh, the booklet. Oh, I love booklets. Yeah. But anyway, you know, like the two discs, the Blu rays and shit like that. And, um, it's got, it, like, this just has a great edition. Yeah, it has the booklet and just like, all, all kinds of special features and documentaries and interviews and making ofs and all the kind of shit. And I mean, it is super controversial and, you know, I'll get into, I'll get into that later, you know, after I watch it for like the fucking hundredth time. I just, I don't know. It's, there's something about this movie that's kind of special because it's very dated now. I mean, shit, what, this came out in 80, right? 1980? Some shit like that. Came out like a while ago. No, it's your favorite movie. How come you didn't know? I don't know because I don't pay attention to that kind of shit. I just pay attention to how awesome the movie is. Get up off my nuts. But yeah, like fucking, I don't know. I think it came out in like 1980. But anyway, it's like, it's very, very dated now. Very, very dated. I mean, shit, dude. Like, there's been much more, like, disturbing, hard-to-watch movies that have come out after, you know? 
So it's like this one in the, in the spectrum of like super fucked up movies could still be up there, but it's not like it's not like some of the shit like a Serbian film. You know, a Serbian film is just it's it's a nasty movie. It just you don't feel good after watching it. I'm not saying you probably like jump for joy and do cartwheels after you watch this like I do, but um <clears throat> it still has this rawness and this just feel that's just like it's it's another one of those movies that I'm telling you it's like I don't know why they hit me, but I mean, there's some lighthearted moments in it. I can say that there is some, like, you know, a little banter. And there's some, they, they throw a little lightheartedness in there. But it's just dread the whole time. You just always feel like something not good is going to happen. And what I loved is the juxtaposition of the absolutely gorgeous fucking music that Riz Ortolani did during some of the most savage scenes. And then just, like, the weird electronic stuff, which just gave it kind of, like, this weird fucking vibe. You know, with the tribal drums and the pew, pew, pew. It's just like, it's like, why? It's just, it's kind of weird and it's just kind of freaky. And it's just, it all fucking works. It all fucking works. And, oh man, Robert Kerman. I mean, the voiceover fucking maestro of the fucking 70s and 80s. So many Italian movies you can hear his like overdubbed voice on. It's so great. But, like, this, just watching him fucking act in it and everything else. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to watch this shit again because uh, I just I just love it. This I'll, I'll talk more about it later. I've already rambled on for about seven minutes. You, you see, I told you, unlucky 13. I'm going to talk a lot. But that's enough bullshitting about shit. I'm going to watch it, even though I, I could just skip watching it and just go right into all the shit. No, I, I want to fucking watch it. And then uh, we'll talk about bits and pieces of it. Well, we, <laughs> I, I don't know, me and my other self. Is there another me? Have you met the other me? Have I met the real me? Other me? Who me? Why me? Lie me. That's what it was. All right. Well, I'm going to go watch this shit and I'll be back and yap at you for a long time more. Um, call me down on a panty sty, my damies. Time to go watch Cannibal Holocaust for the five billion time, and I'm gonna love it in a bit. Twits. Cap a motherfucking chow. Cannibal Holocaust, man. I've seen this movie so many times. I, it's my favorite horror movie, my favorite movie of all time. There's just so much like stigma surrounding it. It's just there's something about it. It's like I don't know. It's just got this whole vibe. The, 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 like I, I like I talked. I think about the last movie. It follows where it's just like that dread. There's some camaraderie and it's fun and blah blah blah. But it's just straight dread. Even when the beautiful music plays, you know, like the Pike scene. Yeah talk about that here in a little bit but uh yeah it's just this movie is so fucking great like there's so many just different parts about it that i that i love you know and like um one thing is just like like i'll, I'll just jump into it the juxtaposition of like the whole pike scene with uh, the music that's playing at the at the time, you know? It's like this beautiful fucking sad kind of music, like orchestral music playing with just this brutal scene. And it's like how they did it is like, I, I'm like, okay, I like do kind of spoilers, but I'm like wondering, you know, because I've seen <clears throat> all the special features. It's been a while since I've watched them, unfortunately. I shouldn't do that sometime because it'd be cool. Where, um... I watched a lot of like the interviews and the, ma and the behind the scenes and a lot of stuff and like how they did the Pike scene, you know, and, um, you know, e either you're going to watch the special features or not. And then I'm like, fuck it, dude, I'll talk about it. So like, anyways, this special effect, like I want to get this tattooed, like, you know, that on my arm because I don't know, I love the movie and I'm like, fuck it, dude, that'd be pretty awesome. And, um, 
basically they had her sitting on like this little kind of pedestal that looked uncomfortable as shit, right? And she just had like this little little bit of like I don't know I don't even know what it was made out of. I don't remember if it was like foam rubber or some kind of shit. Where it was the end of the pike sticking up out of her mouth and everything, right? That she was kind of holding in her mouth. And then she, she, they just had her lined up to where it looked like it was going straight through her and everything, you know? And then painted with all the blood and all the stuff and everything else. It's just like... It's, it's great special effects. But um, <clears throat> with this movie, let's just get the great big fat elephant that, in the room out of the way. The animal killing. All right, that turned a lot of people off. A lot of people were like, "Fucking, ugh, this movie is fucking horrible because of it." But like I said, I watched the I watched the making of the interviews and everything else, and um, I'm just gonna dive right into it. Altogether, the animal deaths, all the animals were consumed. They were all eaten. They weren't just killed and thrown on a trash heap, and that was it. No, they they were killed and they were eaten. I want to get that right out there right now. Before I go on with anything else. Now I get that some of the deaths of the animals were like done in a very like kind of fucked up way, you know, especially like the muskrat or some shit like that or whatever it was, it was where it's like it's alive and he's like stabbing it and stuff. And like the turtle scene is a big one. People are like the turtle and it's like people eat turtle soup. I'm not sure exactly how a turtle is butchered. I've seen like slaughterhouse like footage of like, you know, sheep and cows and all that kind of stuff. Cause it's like, I love hamburgers and stuff. And I love steaks and I'm not going to pretend like, Oh, somebody throws magic fairy dust at a fucking cow and it turns into meat for people to consume. Uh, there, there's a whole process, you know? And, um, I don't know how you, how you would prepare a turtle, but I kind of think that's the way you do it. And it's like, I get that it's hard to watch, like on camera, especially since they're killing it while it's alive, they're not doing some like beat it in the head with a rock. So at least it's dead, dead quickly and everything. They do draw the deaths out of the animals. I will concede that, but, um, you know, I've figured that's the way you would butcher a turtle. I don't know. And that guy, Felipe is their guide. He's been in the jungle. He knows the jungle. He knows how to survive in the jungle. He knows what to do in the jungle. And so he like, they got a turtle and he, fucking butchered it up and cooked them some fucking turtle and everything which they really ate the turtle and everything like and like the muskrat <clears throat> i get that one's hard same thing not just like rock out okay good to go it was tough because they're killing it while it's alive and everything else and then um but i like kind of paying more attention to it this time it almost looks like he's trying to like you know at least like cut the jugular or some kind of shit like that do something to like have it bleed out quicker but it's like, it is tough to watch. It's alive and everything. The natives ate that monkey. They really ate the monkey brains. They love monkeys. I would say the snake and the spider are probably the only two that they, they just killed them, you know? But um, what was the another one? The pig. They ate that pig, man. They cooked that pig up. I get it wasn't like a, a humane way of killing it. That I will concede that the, the deaths were less less than humane to the animals. But they were all consumed. So at least take some solace in the fact that they were, as an end result, consumed and not wasted, not just killed for nothing, you know? So <clears throat> I'm glad I got that big fat fucking elephant out of the room there. I know people are still going to be like, well, still, it's fucked up. And it's like, yeah. And I got to do this. I'm sorry, man. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of Eli Roth. Love Green Inferno. He pulled that. He pulled that one punch. Cause let me, let me, let me go on a different track. It's like there are two. Like you're walking through the woods and there's two roads. And I was starting to make one point and then I made a point the other way. And that's the road less traveled by. I believe that was Robert Forster that wrote that poem, and it's really good. It's a really good poem. You should get his book of poems. Like, he does a lot of stuff. He's actually a very well-known poet. But, um... <clears throat> if you're gonna watch an early 80s... I guess, like, late 70s, early 80s... Around this era, like... Cannibal Holocaust, Make Them Die Slowly... A lot of those cannibal movies around then... You gotta be prepared for some shit. And some of the shit you gotta be prepared for is... Yes, animal... Animal deaths. You know, that's one of them. 
full frontal male nudity. If uh, seeing a wiener is going to make you feel weird, don't watch one of these movies because they're, they're going to have a wiener in them somewhere. There's probably going to be some rape in it too. You know, it's like it, it, they make sure to like fucking just get some, get a lot of shock and in your face value out of certain little things. And Eli Roth pulled that punch with the animal deaths. He really pulled it. I guess he's like a PETA dude with everything, which is cool. You know, you want to be a PETA dude, whatever. But it's like, Eli, we live in an era where like, I don't know, practical effects like animatronics and everything else. And maybe even a little CGI mixed in and everything. You can show animal deaths without actually hurting a real animal. But I guess if your beliefs are so deep held that even killing a fake animal is wrong, I'd say that's a little weird, but I mean, whatever. Like, you pulled that punch. I love Green Inferno. I, it is such a beautiful fucking ode to this era of movies, which I, I, I'm a fan of. The subgenre, great. Jungle Holocaust and all that shit, too. You know, it's just a lot of really good stuff. But uh, you pulled that punch, Eli. You pulled that fucking punch, bro. But the rest of it, spot on. Still, Green Inferno, great movie. But anyway, we're talking about this motherfucker. Um, and just, I, I love also how it bounces back and forth, like between like found footage and like real time stuff and just the character builds. We don't get this hundred percent full on, this is who these motherfuckers are, you know, like we don't get like past, like flashbacks to their fucking past. So we know what their child was, like. nothing like that. But as it goes on, we get to really see we, we get to see more of these characters and it builds upon them and builds and builds. And it's like, okay, you know, especially like the interviews that they have with like the family and all that kind of stuff with the, the missing motherfuckers and everything else. But like just how they interact, we can tell that they've worked together a lot before. They know each other maybe a little too well, but they know each other super fucking well. They're like, they've been like running together for years, years. You can tell. And, um, <clears throat> we get to see their camaraderie, but we also get to see like this side of them that's like so sensational, like a, the Pike scene where the fucking motherfucker is just like grinning, like, oh my God, this is such great footage. This is going to be so great. You know, after she was killed because they raped her, you know, it's just like oh, so horrible. And even like Faye, when she's like, like during the rape scene where she's like, are you filming this? This is just a waste of film. She doesn't care what exactly they're doing. I mean, maybe uh, Alan to a point. She cares because it's like her and Alan are kind of a thing, I guess. But like, she still is like more concerned with like making sure to save the film for like what they came there for than their little jungle jollies as they called it, you know, or whatever. But um, just to build on them and even like Robert Kerman's character, you know, it gets a build on him as we see him go through the jungle. It really starts to build on his character where it's like, yes, he's this professor. He's this anthropology professor. But he's also like very human. And, you know, it's like his way of thinking. And just a, it, it's a it's super great character development in a very like subtle, almost natural kind of way where you're getting to know these people. And another thing I love is as we're getting to know Alan and the gang, as we're coming to find out more and more about those assholes, so are the people in the movie. You know, so it's like we're kind of like learning and going on this journey with them about what happened. And it just like it almost it's, it's almost like you're right there with them. And it's like pretty fucking spectacular. I mean, there's just so much about this movie that put together. It's actually like, let's say you decided to take all the gore out, like all the fucking shit, all the rape, all the animal killing all this, all the elements that make it shocking and controversial. Took all that out and just built the movie, right? I mean, still, like, people getting killed, but just took out, like, all, like the pike and all the other kind of shit. Just the rotting woman next to the thing, the fucking one where the, they take the fetus out of the lady, you know, she, the, she gives birth or whatever, and they bury it and they beat her to death. Take all that shit out of there. And, like, the, the ritual adultery murder scene, you know? Take all that out. This is a great solid movie. It's like fucking Jaws where it builds and the characters are just solid. Everything fits and it's just, it's a great fucking build and a very solid movie. He made a very good movie and it's just, 
it's extremely fucking controversial still. I know that people are still going to be like, you know what? The way they killed the animals and the fact they killed animals, fuck that movie and go to hell. That's up to you, man. I'm not saying this movie's for everybody. Not every movie is for everybody, you know? If that was true, it's like every movie would sell out and sell every copy all the time. It's just not a thing. People have their whims. One of mine is Cannibal Fucking Holocaust. And if you are a big fan of the film and you you, you, you maybe just got like a little basic copy, you want to upgrade, you like dig it enough that you're like, hey, man, that'd be pretty cool. The Grindhouse releasing, releasing of three dish deluxe editions of two Blu-rays and a soundtrack CD, motherfuckers. Yes, I've driven around bumping that. That's hilarious. But it's fucking great. Um, you know, to suggest this, if you want like a really, really super solid fucking copy. And like there's in the there's a link in the fucking deal for this. And um yeah, I mean, this this is pretty tight. I still got, I got like a French version, like I was saying, and um, I still got my two disc DVD, like I was saying, you know, and um, <clears throat> I don't know, I just love the, love the imagery too. Just like the, the natives and everything and just how, how you see the juxtaposition of like how Alan and his crew and then the professor and their crew, how they interact with them, you know, where it's a very childish fucking rude mean self-centered way they the Alan and the gang you know confront them even though they're supposed to be looking for him and making a big old documentary and doing something important just very immature and horrible the way they they treat him while the professor and everything come in with this respect you know and it's pretty fucking cool and yeah and it's a very divisive movie. Yet again, another very divisive movie. You know, some people love it. Some people fucking hate it and think it's trash. So there I go again. And speaking of which, next week on episode 14, I will be doing another divisive film. Oh my God. Oh my God. Pootie. Pootie. Oh my God. Is this like your new fucking thing? No, it just happens to be that way that I don't know. I've come to find out that some movies are very divisive and, you know, some people hate this movie, but I am one of the people that love it. Midsummer, That's right. Midsummer, Very divisive movie. Some people love it and just love how it builds and just love the scenes and love, love how it goes. While others just think it's a boring piece of trash. And, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, man. It's like, I dig it. I don't expect everyone to love everything I love. I don't... Or hate everything I hate, you know? We're all different. We all like different shit. And uh, Midsummer, we'll talk about that next time. Fucking Cannibal Holocaust. What more can I say about this thing? I mean, either you've seen it or you haven't. I don't fucking know. But like, I'm trying to think of some other shit just with this where... I don't know. I just... It's so great. <laughs> it's just so fucking great. I mean, I, I, every time I watch it, I just get sucked in and I just, I gotta watch it. And I watch it like a couple times a year at least. It'll just be like, oh, it's time. I just, I want my fix. I want my fix of this movie. Because like I said, is it's just like, it's very in your face. Very, very in your face in some parts. But it's also just a really solidly written, acted fucking movie. You know? I'm, I mean, it, it's, it's... <laughs> It's it's almost like they took a really good Hollywood writer and then was like, hey, I want you to write with like a splatter writer and then we're just or just like a very despicable horror writer or something. And you guys are going to write a movie together because it's just it's so great because it's just so serious, it's just so fucking serious. And it's just. Like, just so well put together. Like I said, Behind All the Shock is a really fucking solid movie. So, if you haven't seen it, watch it once. You know? At least once. You don't have to, you don't have to love it and watch it anymore. But, like, give it a fucking watch. Find out what the, the hype is about. You know, before there was, like, fucking a Serbian film and all this other kind of shit. This was the A number one fucking bad motherfucker on the block. So, yeah. And you'll see that it's like, it's way tamer than shit like a Serbian film. 
way tamer, but still very in your face nonetheless, you know? So yeah, like give it a watch once. If you, if you have seen it and you think it sucks, then don't watch it again. If you have seen it and you love it, fucking watch it again. <laughs> I'm probably going to get in trouble for acting like that, but <sighs> YOLO. That's what my grandma always said. I think she said that that was like her dying word. When she died, like she pulled me close and I was just like, yes, Graham, Graham. Yes, Graham, Graham. What is it? And she just looked me dead in the eye and she, and, and she, and she was just like, YOLO, you little bitch. And then her dying breath, that death rattle breath. <sighs> and then, then she passed. That was like the worst birthday I've ever fucking had. But <laughs> you can't choose your family, can you? Thanks, Graham Graham. Anyway, this has been episode unlucky 13. You know, I already explained why it's unlucky. It's unlucky because... He found the film and everything else. Even the natives, the poor unlucky natives, because they had to deal with all this bullshit. They're just trying to live their lives and and do do their shit. They're just they're just in their own little world, living their fucking lives. And the motherfuckers are rolling up in their shit, just fucking it up, you know. So it's even unlucky for them, you know. It's it's just like everything surrounding from like inside the theatrical movie itself. All everybody's fucking unlucky to. Everything that happened, the controversy that happened with the movie afterwards and the unlucky shit that happened there. But, uh, yeah, I, I love this movie and it won't be like, it'll probably be like, I don't know, five, six months down the road. I'll be watching this motherfucker again, like twice a year, twice a fucking year. But, uh, yeah. So this was episode unlucky 13. Cannibal Holocaust, my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm going to quit yapping now. And I, I this is going to be a longer video. People are going to be like, well, go figure. This guy fucking yapped that long about that shit. But it's like, I just thought about what my grandma said. YOLO, you little bitch. And I was like, Psh. she was never wrong. She was an old gypsy woman. She did foresee my death too, but. <sighs> I love going to the carnival, so I don't know how I'm not going to go on the zipper. But eventually, I, she said, I, it might not even be a carnival. She just said that I would be involved in some kind of accident involving a zipper that would bring about my demise. I don't, it, it could be like, I, I don't know if like, I don't know. Maybe I get a zipper that's like really super sharp for some reason, and I like cut my cut cut my my little pooty off, and then I just bleed to death or something. Or maybe uh, I I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to zip myself up in a sleeping bag and accidentally like nick my neck and just bleed out. I don't know. But I but I I'm still going to carnivals. So I'm hoping I'm hoping it's a sleeping bag accident because that'll look great in an obituary. Man dies in sleeping bag accident. People are going to be like, hold up. But anyway, enough about that shit for a while. Till next time. I held that for a long time. I could have held it longer, but I got to wrap this shit up. All right. Tippy time, my damies. I'll see you next time. This has been Reviewly Interrupted with moi, your El Hosto, Pooty Tang. And I will uh, see you next time. Kappa chow, bitches. Uh, you